Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel on the Green. If you're watching this service, you're probably aware of our website and I would encourage you to explore it more and on it you will find other opportunities for worship, our midweek meditation, as well as our Thursday night evening prayer. And now I invite you to take a moment of silence to prepare to join in the liturgy this morning.
thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the
reading from Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, know what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household, 
who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Get settled into our daily lives and forget whom we follow. 
We might think, oh, I'm just a little person in a part of a little church, and I really can't do much, so why bother? Well, why bother indeed? Except that God bothers. And then God asks us to bother too. Jesus is telling us that the kingdom starts out small like a seed and grows into a tree that shelters and nurtures life around it. When that small seed starts growing, it has an advantage because it can grow in and around the landscape, whatever that landscape is. This is how the gospel is spread wherever the church discerns which leaf to unfurl in her present landscape. A little branch here, a tiny twig there, and suddenly a place is alive with people being nurtured by the gospel. God's gifts are unexpected, and they require a response. Of course, sometimes we don't know how to respond or what to do with the section of God's kingdom that we've been given. Even right now, we're in flux. Our church, our community, our nation, the world. We don't know what the future holds for us. But even in the unknowing, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words, we're told. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. It might not look like what we think it should look, but God knows better. So look at your life in the light of grace. Something is there for you to find. Whether you feel happy or sad, whether your life seems successful or even disastrous, whether you call yourself a winner or a loser, that something is the activity of the kingdom, yeast bubbling away in your corner of the lump. Be patient, though, as the dough rises and comes to life, and remember that this dough is not just a dead lump a hopeless, shapeless pile, but a universe where opportunities become real. The yeast is at work with your life, your circumstances, and the people around you. Nothing is outside its purview. So brothers and sisters, in these trying times, trust God. The God that uses what others think is unusable, the God that calls us to love others with reckless abandon. The God that sees in us what other people cannot see. By living this way, we become what the kingdom of heaven is. So may each of us go forth this week and encounter places and people and circumstances and look there for the kingdom. Not as distant, but right here near at hand. Not necessarily as obvious, but hidden. Not as static, but alive and becoming manifest. A kingdom that is constantly making room for all of us. Amen. Our service continues with our confession of faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God out from God, light from light, true God from true God. He ought not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation.
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 